Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thundermist Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thundermist Fishing Tips. You know, there is one thing I do like about the month of March. I don't like losing the hour sleep at night, but by springing the hour forward, I get an extra hour during the evening. And right now, folks, it's gotta be close to six o'clock. It is close to six o'clock. And I think we've got about an hour of daylight here left. I'm out here with the boatless angler himself. We're boatless today, folks. And that's another good thing about the springtime. There's a lot of good fishing to be had right from shore. And today, folks, we're looking for trout. And at this time of year, it's late March, you've got a good opportunity to catch a steelhead, along with rainbows uh, and brown trout as well. But uh, the springtime is a great run for trout. We're out here, it's, it's almost six o'clock. We're out here at the Niagara River fishing out of Queenston and we're hoping for one good bite. And uh, as I said, I've got Antonio with me today. He's already fishing, as you know, he likes to get his line wet right away. We're hoping for a good hour of fishing, so stay tuned, folks. See if we can get into that one nice fish. <laughs> folks, well, I'm gonna say we're 10 minutes in and we got our first hookup. Gave me a nice little bite too. Antonio, here comes the boatless angler himself. Hey, what do you think, Antonio? It's really good. <laughs> Way to show me up. <laughs> well, and, uh, uh, I'm running that new, actually, I'm running a new line, folks. I'm running a 10 pound Thunder Mist new braided line. And by the time you see this episode, the line probably won't be out yet, but it'll be out a short while after. It feels like a decent fish. And all I'm doing, I'm casting up river. You see, there's a boat there. Actually, just to talk about being boatless. You don't need a boat this time of year. A lot of our, oh, it's a nice, nice little rainbow. Let's see if we get them. You don't need a boat this time of year. There's a nice little rainbow trout right there, folks. Hey, nice. Antonio. Nice fish. Actually, it's more of a steelhead. Look at that. It's got nice colors. It's got beautiful color. And the hook is just in the side of the mouth there. Okay, there goes the hook. This is one nice fish, folks. Let me see if I can get him to calm down a bit here. Move my line off. Whoops. Okay. They're strong. <laughs> They're strong. <laughs> well, I, I brought him in pretty, oh, the line's still in his mouth. I brought him in pretty quick, actually. Let's get the line, let's get the hook out of the mouth. All right. Nice fish. Yeah, there's a nice fish right there. Okay, okay, there we go. Nice little rainbow right there, folks. What do you think, Antonio? Are we gonna release him or you wanna keep this one? Let's keep that one. You wanna keep my figured. He wants to, uh, you wanna do a little bit of that uh, Gravlex recipe Antonio does with these fish, but there's a nice rainbow trout right there, folks. And I gotta say, we're here for about 10 minutes. I'll show you the rig and how we're fishing. We'll get into that, but uh, let's put this guy on ice right now. I'll put him away and I'll uh, get back to my fishing. But that is one nice rainbow trout right there. And I think that is a steelhead, Antonio. It looks like. It looks like a small steelhead to me. And the way you could tell, folks, you see is all silver. There's no rainbow in this fish at all. It's all silver. And see how he's like a torpedo shape? Um, sometimes those rainbows are more like a, more towards a football type shape. But this to me looks like a nice little Niagara River steelhead right there. And he is bitter cold. That water is bitter, <laughs> bitter cold. You can see I'm standing on ice right now, folks. It's, it's late March and whoops. There you go, he's on ice. <laughs> he's on ice, all right. It's late March, and we're gonna put this guy in the keep basket, if I can get him to calm down. Where is the keep basket, Antonio? <laughs> Look at it. Okay. <laughs> okay, folks, I just rigged up with another row bag. And here's the technique we're doing today. I'm casting it upstream a bit. And I've got about a three quarter ounce sinker on. And the reason I'm casting it upstream if I cast it straight ahead, what happens is by the time that sinker goes down, it's actually gonna be off to the side here a bit, and I'm just gonna have a very, very short drift. Whereas this way, by casting off upstream, I'm gonna maximize the amount of drift I have. And all I'm doing, you can see here, that, that sinker just hit bottom, and it's, it's just dragging along the bottom. I'm just letting that sinker bounce its way along the bottom, and when I feel it get just hung up a bit, I just lift up my rod tip, and I let it keep bouncing. And what's happening is as the trout are moving around, they'll see that roll bag bouncing around down there and, and, and they hit it. And that one hit right about here is where it hit. And uh, it hit it on the bounce. And all I've got for a setup, folks, well, the rod I'm using, I'm just using a seven, pound, or seven foot long rod. 
And uh, I know with the trout anglers, uh, a lot of trout anglers like to use a longer rod. And one of the advantages of a longer rod, for example, an eight foot or nine foot rod, is you can get away with very, very light line. And trout are a very weary fish. They get spooked very, very easily. So uh, with lighter line, of course you avoid the spook. But nowadays with the fluorocarbons and the thin diameter lines, you can get away with a lot heavier lines and as such you can use a shorter rod. Now having said that, the other benefit a longer rod gives is when you're fighting the fish, it absorbs a lot more of the power from the fish. So um, you, it's less work on your drag. So longer rods do have an advantage, but right now I'm running a seven foot rod and I'm getting away with 10 pound braid uh, and I've got an eight pound fluorocarbon leader running to my hook. So what I've done folks is I've tied on a T-turn swivel, a small one because I want to keep a small profile in the water and uh, they're rated for 35 pounds so they're plenty strong. So I've got a small T-turn here uh, and I'm going down about, oh I'm going to say about 10 inches or so to a, to a size 6, size 6 octopus style hook. And, um, and then I've got a little bit of a longer line to my sinker. So I've got about 8, eight inches to the hook and about 12, 14 inches to the sinker. And the reason for that is my sinker is going to touch bottom and my hook is just going to be above the rocks with my row bag. And I mentioned row bags, I have people writing in. All row bags are folks, they're just salmon eggs that are tied into a sack with, with a mesh. And we use some pink, pink mesh today, there's different colored meshes. Uh, we're going with a hot pink today and uh, we've tied about maybe eight uh, salmon eggs into a sack. And then we also put in some, some little floaters, styrofoam floaters. And the reason for those are just to keep that row bag more buoyant as we're, uh, as we're fishing here along the bottom. So that's the advantage of the, uh, of the styrofoam balls. So I like to use them. I like to put in about two or three into each row bag uh, when I'm tying them. And you can catch your own. If you catch a salmon with eggs, you've got some, or you can buy them. You can buy salmon eggs at, uh, at your local shop and tie your, own, uh, tie your own row bag. So that's an option for you. And that's basically the rig. It's a simple rig. And uh, again, just bottom bouncing and letting that bait work its way along the bottom. And when you feel a hit with the trout, when they bite, it's basically whack, whack, whack. And uh, you have to set the hook right away. They've got the row bag in their mouth and they're, and they're taking off with it. So you pretty much have to set the hook right away. And one thing that Antonio commented when, uh, when, we, uh, when I put that fish away on ice is that that steelhead didn't fight that much. And that's not normal. Normally they give a lot better fight than, uh, than what I just had. So that one came in kind of easy, but we got our bonus fish. That's really all we wanted. We're going to fish for another, uh, I think we got about another 40 minutes before the, uh, the light goes out on us here and it turns into darkness. But hey, who knows? Maybe we'll get another fish, so stay tuned. Oh, folks, I was just going to say, I looked at my watch or my clock, my phone, I should say, and it's after 7 o'clock and we're just thinking about wrapping things up and guess what happened? I got myself another bite. And prior to that, the only thing I got was a snag. Hey, Antonio? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I got a bonus fish here, folks. You know, we were happier to get just one fish. And it looks like we might end up with two. That is, if we can land them. Bigger than the last? It feels a little bit bigger and, and it's a, a little bit stronger. So I got to take my time with them a bit. But you know, I'll tell you, it's been a long, hard winter, folks. And it sure is nice to, to be able to fish open water again. This has been great to put those ice fishing away, ice fishing rods away. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, this fish is gonna take a little bit, a little bit more to get in. I'm just gonna loosen up my drag there. What I don't wanna do is have them break me off because like I said, I'm running that eight pound fluorocarbon leader. There he is there. Nice fish. Oh, it looks like, looks like a nice rainbow from here. Or steelhead, can't tell yet. But, <laughs> but that's the other thing with March fishing. Late March, the ice is unsafe anyhow. And what a great opportunity to find some open water and start fishing for, for rainbows. Oh, or steelhead. It's a great time to do that. And like I say, after the winter we had, I'm telling you right now, folks, I'm loving every minute of this. <laughs> Not that I minded fishing with the little ice fishing rods, but it's nice to set the hook on something a little bigger and fish in open water. Oh, there he is there. Oh, it's a nice rainbow. 
there is a nice rainbow right there, folks. Antonio, can you manage? I can try. Oh, yes. Nice female. Oh, oh, oh. There's, a nice, yeah, there's a nice fish right there. And again, another silver torpedo, Antonio. Nice fish. Yep. Look at that. Oh. Get that hook out right in the snout. Okay. Oh, there we go, folks. <laughs> There's a bonus fish right there, eh, Antonio? Nice. We said we want, we'd be happy with one fish. Well, let me tell you, I'm twice as happy now with two fish. But I think this is going to do it for us, folks. Uh, we're having a great time out here. It's only been in just over an hour that, uh, that we've been out here on the water. And uh, again, folks, take advantage of that hour, that spring forward, that evening bite. You know what? There's not a lot of people, eh, Antonio? There's nobody out here. All right, we have one, one person there behind us. There was a couple boats earlier, but that's the other advantage of the evening bite. Uh, you have uh, more of a chance. There's a lot more room to fish. And look at this, we got a really nice bonus fish to boot. So we've had a great night here tonight, folks. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Thunder Miss Fishing Tips. It's great to be boatless. I'm happy to have you with us. And as always, until next time, good luck and good fishing.